Hey, this is Jake, and this is episode 41, where we're talking taxes and a little bit of motivational content. Well, it has come time time to that season. It's tax season. And first of all, thank you guys for being on here with us today. Um, This is episode 41, and we're going to do something a little bit different here. We're going to talk a little bit of financial uh, topics tonight. Um, And in particular, we're going to talk about taxes. If that's all right with you guys, it is the season to file taxes and um, try to get that going. The deadline date to file the U.S. taxes, if you're here living in America, is April 15th. Or if you're living abroad, you can apply for uh, extension um, up till, I think, October 15th to pay for your taxes or file for your taxes. Um, but uh, no, I shot this out to the group earlier today, maybe about actually maybe an hour ago <laughs> about this topic. But no, this is something that I've just um, been getting uh, hit up on and a topic that maybe we can just cover, encourage, and just highlight. We don't want to get too too in depth because, you know, I can go down the rabbit hole if you guys really want to do that. But something that would, um, a piece of good literature that you could check out that's kind of like, um, not really taken by mainstream economists and historians is a book called The Creature from Jekyll, Jekyll Island. It's written by G. Edward Griffin. You check that out, check it up on Amazon, look it up. There's audio books for that. Talks a little bit about how um, the background of how the Federal Reserve System was created, which is also known as our central bank. But um yeah, man. What do you guys think about this topic tonight? What do you What are you guys' impressions on taxes right now? I mean, I'd wish I, I just in general, I wish I paid less. I wish I was able. When you see how much money at like the end with your tax returns, how much money gets pulled out of taxes, and then you see, you know, it, I, I guess I would have less of a problem if you knew all of it was going to help other people, pave the roads, uh, you know, going into to public safety, good training for our police officers, for our firefighters. Like, so there's reasons that for, for taxes and it, there's reasons for them to be there. But then when you look at things going out of our choices, um, you know, without diving into the political side of things, but perhaps political views, funding going to support stuff that you don't necessarily support or, you know, wasteful spending by some of our politicians, you know, we're paying for that. We're paying for their salaries with this. And, and so in a mixed emotions, when it comes to, you know, wasteful spending, you look at, you know, our national debt and how big that's gotten and how we'll never be able to pay that off. And we're paying for all these things. Um, and of course, you know, the, the people, you know, you talk about a little bit about the people in Ukraine and of course they need help. Right. But, and I'm glad that we're helping. Let's just, you know, we'll say that too, but think about, you know, for example, what what if that all that money went to the Polynesian community? What if all that money went to, um, you know, to to help the uh, the poor? You know, if you were making below a certain amount of money, you know, it it seems to me that if we're so quick to, uh, you know, we're we're so quick to spend money uh, elsewhere, and if we knew it was going to help people and real solutions, I'd be more willing to uh you be okay with how you know how much money i'm spending in taxes but it just seems like there's much wasteful and if you gave me all that money to think about what i could do with that uh that money instead uh, of all that so there there's the flip side there so of course there's the give and take on how you feel about taxes and typically i don't i don't usually get too much back at the end of the year um which i am you know i'm thankful for it means i'm doing well for myself right that i don't get a lot of taxes back but um it is also painful to see how much money goes out every year what are taxes like what are taxes what are they good for let's can let's uh let's define what taxes are real quick for let's our general it. listeners so Maybe uh, tech can uh, help us out on what taxes are, what the definition of taxes are. So taxes are fees that the government imposes on individuals, businesses, and other entities to raise revenue for public expenses and various other purposes. Um, Taxes can be imposed on income, sales, property, imports, pretty much almost anything you do here, exports and other types of transactions and activities, you know? Mm -hmm. The revenue... uh, generated by taxes is used by the government to fund various public services, 
such as roads, just like Jake was saying, roads, schools, police, and fire protection, you know, national defense, and uh, social programs, like uh, Jake was saying about, like, uh, better training for, like, firefighting and police officers. And the amount of tax an individual or entity pays is typically based on their income, wealth, or the value of the goods and services they receive. The payment of taxes is usually mandatory, and a failure to pay taxes can result in penalties and other legal consequences. So taxes are used for our general public, for goods and services that will benefit the general public, right? <sighs> That's cool, like schools, police, fire, and all that stuff. We need those things, right? We need first yeah. responders. We need a uh, hospital, or probably that's not, um, not hospitals probably don't fall on that, but national it's defense, right? We yeah. just witnessed a couple of days ago, or maybe yesterday, our national defense taking out that balloon from supposedly China that, um, that they popped. Um, that was an example of national defense. Um, and in my business of work, uh, construction, better roads, better roads, there, you tax, highways. You yep. We need that. Um, so yeah, taxes are, are important for that. And, um, someone once told me that, uh, the tax book, it's about 2000, maybe 3000 pages. And it says the first page on the tax book, the first page on the tax book. Is, says that we have to pay taxes and the other 2,199 are all ways of us to avoid paying taxes. <laughs> Did you guys hear about that? <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. It's true. You can look it up. You can go to the, the first page of the tax book. Um, so it tells us that we have to pay taxes. And then the, the other thousands or so tells us how to avoid paying maximum taxes. And it's important to understand like, it's understand ways to not pay, uh, to not pay taxes on stuff that you shouldn't, right? So those other pages are good for everybody to be educated on, and to talk about because I would say the average person, is just in general speak, doesn't understand how, um, how to save on taxes and how to, you know, because most people just don't they're paying taxes on stuff that they shouldn't have, or um, if you're using some of your income for certain things, that also gives you a tax break. I think that's right. uh, important to understand. Right, right, right. Um, we'll get we'll get into that a little later. Um, but taxes, the history of taxes in America can be traced back to like the colonial period. So the British government imposed various taxes on the American colonies in the 17th and 18th centuries. Um, remember that the infamous taxes on tea. That helped uh, spark the American Revolution. You know how Britain was taxing the, the our tea here, and the Americans here didn't like that. You know what happened from there. But um, after gaining independence from the British, um, the United States government initially relied on tariffs and like imported goods from America, um, from like France and all the other countries to um, like uh, excise their taxes uh, and, and products to create and generate revenue. But the first federal income tax, I believe, was enacted in the United States during the Civil War in 1861 and was later repealed in 1872. That's just some, some uh, history right there. But our modern federal income tax system that we all know right now, it wasn't established um, until 1913 when President Woodrow Wilson Freaking on the sixth, use the Sixteenth Amendment to pass it in the Constitution. It basically granted Congress the power to tax individuals and corporate income. Um, but since then, the tax system in the United States has undergone like a hell of changes. There's been over a hundred different amendments and stuff to it, and uh, we can say that it's played a major role in financing the federal government and its various programs. Like I even. Uh, I, I participated in some of the programs when I was in high school. I think Meet Tech and I in middle school and high school is a program called uh, Upward Bound that we benefited from. That gave us exposure to higher education, right? You remember that, Tech? Yeah, that I was remember a fe that. Federal program that we had. Maybe some of you listening probably were part of that, right? First um, generation college students from low income homes. Um, were granted opportunities to participate in like college programs, summer programs during high school. It was pretty tight. But yeah, our modern day tax system 
wasn't started until 1913. I don't know if y'all knew that. That's only it's only been on almost 200 years um, since we've been riding with this tax system. But was there a particular reason that that inspired it? Like, do we need money for? You know, is that is that is that coinciding with World War One with the dates there? Um, World War when was World War One? Went to, no, I think World War One was afterwards. A little later. Yeah, a little later. What well, actually? Let me see. But I wonder what inspired the change. Because you think like it makes sense early on. Let's like just kind of like make sense. I like to try and make common sense of things, right? So you think about why they aren't taxing everybody. I'd assume it'd be very difficult because most people don't have money. Most people exchange goods and services, right? So you had your stonemason, your um, you had your farms and your cows and your you know your milk and your commodities, and so pe- people were probably trading more with. So I would imagine it'd be really you know trading more with goods and services. I'll do this for you. You do this for me versus you probably have a lot more people in 1913 having money uh, on hand. Right. So I think still at that point, gold is backing our, our, our money as well. Um, so you have gold backing our money. You have a lot more people having money. And then I wonder what triggers, uh, what triggers the ask. So it would, I would, I would imagine there was a need of the government having more money for something. Maybe in multiple things, but uh, I'm curious to see kind of what inspired that. Yeah, that's this is the time that we go down the rabbit hole. Because <laughs> <laughs> wasn't there <laughs> wasn't there a temporary tax before that too? Notice during one of our wars, they they brought taxes in temporarily and then took them away. Yeah, not, uh, 1914. That's when World War One started, July 20, oh, okay. 1914. So. Wow. A few, like maybe six months after they created the the Central Bank for the United States, they had that war. And it was it was started because there some dude in Austria got assassinated. Serbian nationalist, what's his name? Franz Ferdinand. That's who, because he got assassinated. That's when the World War One started. But it was between the war involved many of the world's major powers: um, France, Russia, United Kingdom. Germany, Austria, Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire. But yeah, um, no, nah, the it was crazy because before that, um, America. I, I was just reading about this, this. They used to use the Spanish uh, coin, and everything, like you said, it was backed by gold. Everything, the whole world, their whole the the whole entire world um, commerce was backed by gold, and all the. Uh, all the monies, America, France, their banks, they all used the gold standard. It wasn't until after maybe the World War One, that's when they started to issue the paper money and started inflating uh, inflating the money out there. 1913, that's when it all started. So there, it's a kind of a, a biased view of the creation of the Federal Reserve, but in their own accounts, the seven people that met in secrecy off that little island in off of the coast of Georgia, that Jekyll Island, what that book is about. Those seven people later recount in their personal biographies that they were part of that whole situation of creating the Federal Reserve. Like they met in, it was a, it should be a movie. They met in secrecy. They used their fake names and stuff like this. But so, um, so, so let me stop a question there. So tax taxes and the Federal Reserve. It was it was the people that created the federal did they create the Federal Reserve and taxes on the same day? Okay, so in nineteen ten, this is when that meeting took place. Okay. The uh, Federal Reserve okay. wasn't started until three years later in uh twenty nineteen thirteen. Yeah, three days before Christmas, or actually two days before Christmas. Woodrow Wilson, that's when he signed that law. So t- December twenty second, um they wrote the law, they presented the law into Congress. And on the 23rd of December, two days before Christmas, they Woodrow Wilson signed it into the law. And when he did that, um, he knew himself when he there's a bunch of quotes of him saying that he sold America to a bunch of small, an elite group of small uh, businessmen. It, it's huge. But um, before that, we weren't taxed. That's when they implemented the, the federal income tax. Um mm. During 1913, yeah, it's crazy. That's a whole rabbit hole of going down that. But 
the main, main reason I wanted to talk about this, this subject is that there's ways to avoid paying those taxes. Um, and something that I came into learning about just frequent re recently, and I hope to implement in my life, but um, using trust, using private foundations, uh, setting up your LLCs. Um, if you use all those three different things, you can make it so that when you're working, you can help keep your hard earned money. I implore everyone who's listening around to, to uh, go in and um, study or, or research more of those topics. So creating uh, the tax codes, we all know, are benefited towards people who own businesses. There's no secret on that. The common man that goes works nine to five, they're going to end up paying the most taxes. Those are the people like you and me. We're, we pay our, we pay, we have to pay the, our fair share of taxes. But there's ways to for us to to negate those taxes, and by being a, becoming an entrepreneur, by becoming a business owner, owning your own business, having a trust and having a private foundation. Those three things can help you negate and help uh, limit or maybe lessen the amount of taxes you can pay, just like the wealthy do. And I've noticed a lot of people are starting to create their own business. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's, they're starting to learn the what the 1% is doing mm -hmm. and how to play the, the tax game. Right. Who was it that uh, there's a famous quote by Warren Buffett that says, if the poor people would just do what the wealthy people do, that's probably not the exact things that he said, but if they would just copy what the wealthy people do, they wouldn't be poor anymore. And that's what the wealthy people do. They create up and create jobs, right? They create jobs, they create businesses, they create income for the economy, right? And the government helps them and gives them incentives to buy for creating those jobs. And then when you have it funneled through a trust, there's a, that's the, the trust is another way to prevent you from paying all those taxes. And then if you funnel and then, and then they encourage you to be a philanthropist, right? So they encourage you to set up a private uh, nonprofit organization, private foundation. And then it gets interesting because once you have a business, you can like rent out your home to your business and pay yourself. You know, there's all these little tricks. And then you can also hire your 15, 16 year old to work for you and still pay yourself, you know? So there's all these little tricks that you can do by creating an LLC yeah. that, that one percent are doing. Yeah, that's basically it, man. We all know that the first page of the, the tax book says we have to pay taxes. And then the, the, all the other pages in there are designed to, for us to how not to pay all those taxes. And being an entrepreneur, having your own business, setting up a trust, a complex trust, not just any trust, but a, a special complex trust, and then setting up a private foundation. If we just research those things, those are what the wealthy do, and we can help minimize our tax pain. Taxes are good, right? Taxes are good for us. They provide us for first responders, fire, you know, med you know stuff like that, but national defense. But there are ways that we can, you know, have our money work for us, whereas we're, we're not breaking our backs nine to five every day. But that's so, the whole reason. So Go for ahead. our listeners, what, what would you say would be like, where should they start to if they want to take these uh, tax breaks and what incentives, incentives mm -hmm. or where, where should what should be the first thing they should look into? For me personally, if you want to start a business, I'll get with someone that, who has a business, right? Ask uh, a friend or someone who you know locally that has their own business. Ask them what they're doing and see what how they set up their business. Uh, um, you know, yeah. people love that, you know? People yeah, I love agree. Help. I think that's probably one of the major things is you got to find a mentor, someone that helps to w walk you through the process and just show you the ropes, you know? I think a mentor in this... And this kind of thing would go a long ways. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Uh, and then you know, we have resources because of the internet has helped uh, leverage information. Um, definitely Google and YouTube. YouTube University is another great thing. That's what I go to. It's 
could probably learn more in YouTube University than actually going to school sometimes. But so many different topics you can research, um, namely a complex trust, research that. You can research the private foundation, how the wealthy use private foundations and complex trusts on YouTube to funnel and pay less taxes. Um, but yeah, seek out a mentor is probably number one. Seek out a friend or a buddy who you know in the area or close to you that is has a business. See what they're doing. Yeah, I was uh, watching this video on TikTok the other day, and it was saying, um, I believe he said Donald Trump gave him some advice, and he says, first create an LLC. Once you get your LLC, create an S corp. S corp, get that S corp to fund your LLC, and then he said to uh, after that get a, I think he said trust to fund your S corp to fund your LLC. You know, so I, I think the first step was just find something you're passionate about and create an LLC. Mm -hmm. Start a business. Yeah. Start a business, man. That's, I think that's the number one thing to, that we want to create or just to encourage people to think about outside the box, right? We're going to work yeah. nine to five. We're, we're putting all our money in our savings account or in our, in our bank accounts. And there's ways for us to minimize those pay, paying those taxes. And it's, some of these things that we just mentioned just now, just yeah. to help so, minimize that. So, so put yourself in the shoes of, of one of our listeners, right? What if they don't have an idea of what they want their business to be? To walk them through the mindset that they should have still to take advantage of this. Um, you <laughs> okay. Well, he, he, I, I, I have an I idea, mean, if, right? If, but you, you want, you literally want, it could be anything, right? Cause you're just, right. you're, yeah. You're, you're, you know, I'll give you like Jake's investment company, right? And then you're literally, maybe you don't have an idea how you can make money quite yet, right? But it still makes sense to do this, right? Because you can come up with ideas as you go. So you don't necessarily need like a brick and mortar building. That's just my, my, my point here. You don't need a brick and mortar build, building. You don't need an idea. Uh, you can kind of, you, you can work with it. Just get started by starting the LLC uh, I think long term, the, the 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 what makes the most millionaires out there is real estate, right? So you could think long term, maybe you have a few rentals, whatever, right? Start the LLC to to, to start off with. Just that that's the first step. You got to build credit in your LLC, regardless of what it's going to become. So I I think it's less about what business you have and more about creating the LLC, right? Yeah, yeah, because. Uh, Agreed. Yep. So one of my uh, one of my mentors is coach. I work with him a lot. And uh, one thing he was telling me is to get a mentor and to get someone to do your uh, an accountant to do your to do your uh, taxes because having a business taxes can get also get tricky that way. You got to file a certain way. There's certain things you know everything they spend on the company. You got to have the receipts just in case you get audited. You got to have a file for all the receipts and just be, and, uh, you know, there's some accounts out there that cost maybe two, 300 bucks to start, but then every year is a hundred bucks after that. And they, and they'll do your taxes for you. You just got to do the legwork and keeping everything in order. So it'd be easier for them. Organization be yeah. organized. Mm-hmm. Yep, helps to have all those things in place. And yeah, like you said, uh, Jake, it doesn't matter necessarily what the business is that you're trying to go into, but just maybe it could be just uh, even starting a YouTube channel, right? It could even be that, or just um, like maybe even starting a book club, but you change it, turn it into a into a business or start a LLC for it. But that's the right. that's the trick. That's the Are trick. You just or even a podcast. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Podcast, small business, that are endless. If you're an Uber driver, um, if you got a food truck, 
I mean, there, there, those are legit reasons. There's so many things like to go into, but for those of you that don't have a side hustle yet, I would say still go through the motions, start your investment company, just name it. You know, if if you, for lack of a better word, if you don't want to, what you want to be, make it something generic, uh, you know, make the business, start your LLC. It'll be a false, uh, a small fee to, to start it on uh, your secretary of state. Uh, and you know, and that's how you get started. You know, you get started with that, with that entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneur mindset right there. Yeah. Yep. And just like Jake's and just like Jake was saying earlier, you don't need a brick and mortar, you know, like, uh, let's take, uh, Donga, for instance, start our podcast. He started out of his, his room selling cards and now he's worked his way up. Now he's got a right. brick and mortar. Full blown right. card shop. Yep. And he's about to have two. Jeez. So the the main Don't thing is just just get started. Yeah. Just create that LLC and just get started. Shout out to Donga, man. Shout out to you, brother. But yeah, this is just a, a show talking about, you know, our money. You know, some things sometimes, you know, growing up we weren't we didn't talk about money in my household. We learned about it through the hard way. Actually didn't learn about it until in my thirties, so even two now, years ago, four, yeah, forties. <laughs> Tech and I lived in New York City during the financial crisis. Remember that, Tech? Yeah. Uh, Occupy Wall Street. Oh yeah. Tech was down there doing that. I was somewhere else, I think. But you, Tech was there. He witnessed that. So we kind of had we we were around that stuff, right? Went down to Wall Street, seen the buildings. Tech seen. Hell of people sleeping in the park. But it's important to understand how money works and taxes and being responsible for paying those taxes. So we encourage you guys to figure out different ways to pay less taxes. Because keep more of your money. Keep yeah. more of your money. Yeah. And, and one of the ways is becoming an entrepreneur because we know that the tax codes are catered to entrepreneurs and businesses 100 percent. so trust private foundations complex trust in private foundations google that youtube those all those three topics into one sentence and you'll figure it out how we can pay pay less taxes taxes and we can also figure out how we can become our own bank <laughs> that's another thing i just learned recently how we can use whole life insurance policies, specific, specially designed whole life insurance policies to become our own bank. That's another thing you want to look at. It's called the infinite banking concept. If you want to, that's another rabbit hole for you guys to go down. The infinite wait, banking Wait, wait, notice. Hold up. That's right. If you want to like go down the rabbit hole and learn a little bit more, Google and YouTube university search infinite banking concept. It's a concept where you can become your own bank by using a specially designed whole life insurance policy, a dividend paying whole life insurance policy. Check it out. Um, a lot of things you can learn on that. Uh, the money school, the money multiplier, look at all those things. Chris Noggle, Brent Kessler, look at those, look up those names right there. Chris Noggle, Brent Kessler, infinite banking concept. Another way that we encourage you to to research and check it out, man. You can become your own bank and keep and pay yourself instead of putting your money into other people's banks. So, <laughs> dropping dropping some heat right there. Notice so that you know that's good stuff for people. You know, and, and spend time on yourself. It might sound a little foreign. You might have to spend a little time learning about it, but it's worth it because of the doors that this can open for your life, for the life that you want to live and for your family legacy. And so the, you know, these are important things. And I think a lot of us feel like a block sometimes from learning some of these things where it sounds so foreign. So just it, it takes one step in the door to start the process of learning of, of how you can open up some of the things for yourself. And so we just want to encourage you guys to, to be open to, you know, one less Netflix film instead, go learn about these topics that notice just talked about. And you'd be surprised with the information and the knowledge and the power that it can give you for your future. 100%. Yep. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to take work. You know, I remember one quote from the, the rock. He says, don't, don't waste eight hours 
Don't spend eight hours a day working for some, building someone else's dream and zero on yours. So when so just going along with what Jake said, you're just going to have to take some of that time out of whether you're binge watching what Yellowstone or whatever. Just take an hour out of just take one episode away and spend like maybe 15 minutes reading a book about building an LLC or infinite banking or something that'll get you closer to that, living that financial freedom life. Absolutely. They did a poll in America and they asked, uh, asked different Americans what they defined the success as. And let me find that poll real quick. I was listening to, I probably shared this before, but I was listening to Arnold Schwarzenegger and he was talking about his, uh, his story. And he was saying that 74% of Americans hate their job. Jeez. And he's saying it's not like they they had a dream, but they had to get a job because you gotta work, you gotta get money. And then since they got that job, they just they just stuck with it and stopped living their dream. You know. I think from what he was saying is even though you got a job, you still gotta live that dream. You know, and after that eight hours of work that you do, come home and work on your dream. Right. Right. I, I think a lot of us get, especially if you're a hard worker, right? So, you know, there's, there's plenty of people that have learned to work hard. So they'll go do the job they don't like. They'll work hard, but then they won't spend the time to invest in themselves. And, you know, this is something I've, I've got to work on too, because I still face this struggle too, is, you know, do you, know, do you work hard? Do you, you have a long day? Do you invest in yourself or do you veg out like you're saying in front of Yellowstone or whatever, which like we do, right? We do. That's mm -hmm. a, that is a struggle we face, but you can't forget to invest yourself uh, when it comes to knowledge because you invest in yourself, you start the side hustle, the side hustle starts another side hustle. And then before you know it, money is not a concern and you can chase that dream. And so, you know, a lot of us with so many of us having to do our initial job, our, you know, we, we shout out to, uh, Jamal King, nine to five millionaire who, who, who talks oh. about, about real estate, but you use it as a vehicle to get to your other side hustles, your main job. He was a police officer, just a little bit of his story, his story was nine to five, but he was able to, you know, to, to read some books on the clock and, and learn about real estate. And that's what kind of turned into his side hustle and then turned into his empire. And then he was able to chase some of his dreams. Right. So, so the same thing, the challenge for all of us and, you know, for everybody listening, you know, are you ask yourself this, look in the mirror, are you investing in yourself? You've got to, you've got to, if you want to live some of these dreams and, it, and it's important, we were talking about this in our chat, at least I was talking about this because I've been so focused on the, on the work and working hard and moving up that it's I, I've forgotten what it's like to dream, and it's a challenge almost. You know, and you think about kids. Kids don't have much of a problem dreaming who they want to be, mm -hmm. but us as adults have, or at least me, I struggle with the dream because I've so f got tunnel vision on the now, right? And so it's been a challenge for me to do it. But I would because it's a challenge for me. I know it's hard to do, but uh, you can do it. I, I'm doing it myself. I, I know you guys are doing it. So you know, make sure you make time for that. Absolutely. That's a great point right there, Jake. What, what do you say to those people that just don't have, how do you muster up the courage to be able to pursue something like this? If you don't have it, it some people could be depressed. Some people could be just down and out. Where can you, where does that inner strength come from to be able to pursue something like this and seek information? So part of it is we, we, we've been kind of sold we, we've been sold the lie that you need to be motivated to do something or to work on yourself. And the key to success is, is, is when you're not motivated to do, be disciplined and, and do the hard thing. Uh, the thing that maybe sucks to do it anyways. And, you know, you know our brains literally limit us, right? We, we, we have, there, there's some people that talk about this. Jocko talks about it, served in the military, David Goggins, who's very motivational, right? But these are people that are, 
have uh, that recognize when their brain does this, they laugh at it, they challenge it, it and challenge it, and then they go right. And they have their struggles too. Their brains are, you know, still trying to do it. So your brain is inherently can be very lazy, right. And encourages laziness for, I think, think for survival reasons. So we've got to fight against that and we've got to, you know, it now it doesn't need to start with a marathon. It doesn't need to start with, um, you know, learning everything about real estate and when it was one sitting, it starts with one video, right? It starts with one book. It starts with one step, you know, invest. Okay. So if, if a book is intimidating to you, uh, do some research online about what book would be best. So just Google a little bit, find the book. Okay. Then your next step after that would be ordering the book. And then the next step after that would be read 10 pages a day. So it doesn't need to be huge, giant steps. You don't need to solve the, the, you know, for those of you that are struggling to just kind of even get through the initial steps, very, very small goals that are achievable. Start there. Uh, you know, just, just start with one little, one little step that you know, you can do and build from there and keep the momentum going. And we already know that, that that's how you can set good habits. So if you know, okay, you're depressed, it's, you know, it's, it's hard for you to get new information. Again, just do those small little goals, right? So take mm -hmm. 10 minutes of research online first day, pick the book that you want to do next day, order the book. When the book comes in 10 pages a day, small steps like that, I think are the, the way to change, um, you know, and, and just to be able to handle if the obstacle is strong, just in, in changing your mindset, you know, break it down to small little steps. Yeah, that's exactly right. I, so at my work, I spend a lot of my time in my truck. So I listen to a lot of podcasts and there was one that I was listening to where the lady was saying just 1%. If you change your life, Every day, 1%. In one month, you'd be 30% better. Mm. So it just goes along just taking those small little steps. You know? That's Read a deep. book 10 minutes every day. You know? I like that, Tech. Shoot. 30%. Jeez, that's dope. In one month. In one month. And that's and that's what we're here. The hope, hopefully, we got some good, some good commentary. I mean, like, you, hopefully, you guys got some good um, ideas from this this episode. We just wanted to keep it short, and motivational, and encourage you guys to think. There's different ways to lower our taxes, different ways to to move forward in life, and 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 be financially like stable on your own. Mm -hmm. And the main thing is start an LLC. And just, just, just remember that first LLC might be, might not be your empire, but it's just that 1% to get you started. Maybe that'll lead you to another direction that'll, that you want to go into, and then you can go from there. But just to get your foot inside the door, just start with the LLC. Absolutely. Jake, it looks like you're about to play some. <laughs> I'm good. I, I, no, just, just looking. Looking at what I have, I, I'm going to need to expand the soundboard so we can get a sound for, um, a, a sound for when when tech is dropping some knowledge bombs on Dude. us like that. You know what I'm saying? Shoot, <laughs> man, just oh, get man. started. Yeah, just get started, man. That's you know, it's just like going to the gym every day. You know, the hardest part is getting there. Once you're there, you're working out. You know, it's just like creating LLC or doing anything in life. The hardest part is just starting, getting there. Once you're there, you're already, you're going to do it anyways because you're there. Right. The, right. the part, the, the part that, that to talk about and to keep people motivated is people that are motivated to go don't always have motivation to go. Right. And so I think it's important to share that information with everybody else is you don't, you won't always be motivated, but you know, when, when your brain, your brain will tell you, Nope. You know, sometimes when you're trying to, you know, you're, 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 you're on three days in and you're sore and it's 5.00 AM and you're going to meet up with the group when your brain does that, what do you do tech? You know, what's your trick? Wait, say that again. I was distracted by the Nope. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so you're on your couch staring at your shoes and you, you know, you're supposed to go, go work out where your brain tells you, Nope. How do you get past that? Usually I just wake, I just force myself. Yep. Right. But you don't I, need I just, motivation, right? You, no. you just, you, you're supposed I, to do it. 
So it's, it's, it's on your schedule. I would yeah. say for, for some people, this is what helps me is writing it down on my schedule for the month. So I have, I have a week planner for my workouts and for my uh, cold showers, the cold plunges. Some people do that, right? So I've got my cold showers written down. I've got my workouts, the days that I'm working out, the days that I'm lifting, the days that I'm running, right? The days I'm doing the sauna. And so, so for me, I look at it on the days that I'm maybe not motivated. I'm like, damn it. It's on, it's on the schedule. So I gotta go, I go, I gotta go do it. Right. And then that's half the battle is, you know, getting your shoes on, getting out the door. And then once you're there, you're good. Yeah. Cause, uh, I wake up at four and go to the gym at five every day. And for me to, to wake up at four, that's like the hardest part of my day. But the good thing is that, that I work out with a couple of buddies and we all hold each other accountable. You know, that might work for some people out there, you know, that are listening. It's form a group of buddies that you go work out with and hold each other accountable to be at the gym. Yeah, that's actually a principle. Uh, maybe a business principle or a life principle, having accountability partners. That's That's like a trick to being successful in whatever you're trying to do so like every yeah. night we'll have we'll send text messages to our group chat say hey see you guys in the morning at five see you guys in the morning at five <laughs> <laughs> but what about your lone wolves out there I, I love that tech and and i think that would be the goal if you're a lone wolf you need to find some accountability partners but for those of you that don't have it just know still go when you're not motivated right yeah, yeah. so when you're feeling sore and you're not feeling it if it, it was on your schedule and you were supposed to go work out and that's not your planned rest day, still go do it. And, you know, we, we feel the same way we feel for you. Um, but you know, play, play your little violin of, of sorrow in your head for a moment and then get up and go. <laughs> yeah. You know, just like, you know, if you think about the word motivation, it's a fleeting word. It's not a consistent, it, you know, it's a, it's more or less, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a weak word if you think about motivation because it, it is, it's not something that lasts a long time. But habit, habit is what keeps you going. And excuses are only good enough for you. Nobody right. cares about your excuses but you. Sheesh. Come on, Tech. <laughs> tech drop us on fire. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So I, I do want to f- see if I can find that clip of, of Jocko talking about good. I, I know I'm sharing all my audio right now. When I pulled up YouTube, it jumped into some audio there. And maybe, maybe we'll share it next time if I can't find it. And I'll find the clip and program it on the on the soundboard. But he's mm-hmm. but um what if it sucks is what it was called on, on YouTube. And uh Jocko just talks about he he talks about uh so if, if it sucks, good. He's got like this great voice. He's like He's got this switch in his head, you know, because he was, he saw a lot of combat and he, uh, I believe he was a Navy SEAL, right? And he was, you know, the elitist of the uh, uh, very elite of, you know, of, of, of fighters for our country and dealt with a lot of terrible scenarios that were tough. But in his head, whenever it started to suck, he said, good. <laughs> and so hopefully we'll have that clip from everybody next time. But I would, uh, that's something I've been trying to incorporate into my life lately. Like when that cold shower hits, man, and it's very mm-hmm. uncomfortable in my head, I'm like, okay, good. <laughs> when um, I'm going to run and I, I'm on that second mile and it's hard to breathe and it's tough. I'm trying to tell myself in my brain, I'm trying to rewire my brain kind of how yeah, he must have done is to to embrace the the sucky part of it good right good it's i think it's just a good way to uh to find motivation when motivation is not to be found you got to be willing to do stuff today that people aren't willing to get stuff tomorrow that people won't have is that how it goes i don't know but it made absolute sense to me <laughs> that's fire bro <clears throat> yeah so so i I, I started doing the cold. Well, I don't know how you do your cold showers, but uh, coach was telling me that for the last minute to uh, 30 seconds to a minute of your shower, just turn that mug on cold and just let it. I guess what it does is like shocks your body into doing something. And he also told me to brush your teeth with your left hand. 
because it like stimulates your mind to do something. It's like recognize your mind like recognizes something that something's different, you know, and it kind of like wakes up your mind and body. So I I do the last I do the last bit, but I do three minutes at a time because uh, I have a goal of eleven minutes of cold shower per week. So it does give me some days where I don't have to do. Uh, if I'm hitting three minutes on the ones, uh, so there are a couple of things, scenarios. I try and do cold showers, not after my workout, but in the earlier in the day, like you're saying right there, because there is some science behind, uh, it's harder to your, your, your muscle growth. It's harder for, um, hypertrophy to happen after cold. So, uh, yeah. So if, if, excuse me, if you work out and then go to the cold, so you'd want the cold before it. Um, and so starting my day, the mental clarity that comes from it. And so with me having the goal of 11 minutes, I do about three minutes per, um, uh, three minutes of, of absolute cold and it should be cold enough. Like the best benefits I've found, I'm trying to mimic a cold plunge, right? So as cold as it can go. So when it hits, I can't breathe. It's I'm yeah, gasping for it. Exactly. <laughs> uh, it, 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 it's uncomfortable as all get out. Right. And uh, especially for us guys, when it hits, a certain somewhere, but, um, that, you know, then, you know, you're, you're really in it when you're getting cold, the back uh, of the neck, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking more the uh, midsection area is the tougher part, but getting hit there, but you the waist area. Right. But, um, and then, and then the three minutes, it creates mental toughness. And then that second minute and a half, the mental clarity, your body starts to get used to it. Uh, it's pretty amazing what happens after that. I'll have to try the uh, brush your teeth with the left hand though. That's that's interesting, right? For the mental mental stimulation. But and then the other part I've tried to try to incorporate as well is you know when it's that uncomfortable, trying to say in my mind, good, right? <laughs> it sucks, good. <laughs> and yeah. uh, I'm trying to rewire my brain so that hopefully I can adapt to tough situations with a different mindset. That's about all. What it is is just trying to change that mindset, flip that little switch in your head from good, you know? Yeah. Just to think that when you're, when your mind is telling you that you're tired and that's enough for the day, you just got to be like, just one more, just one more. You know, I was listening to this podcast the other day and he was saying, um, I forget who, who it was, but he was just talking about a lot of stuff, but he was saying, if I got to knock on 117, if the if the goal is to knock on 117 goals, I'm doing 118. If I if the goal is 45 minutes on the treadmill, I'm doing 46. You know, and he was always saying that just going that little extra step. So from this show today, I hope you learned a lot of things. But I hope the main things that you guys take out of this is learning about the taxes that's coming up, and also learning how you can benefit from the taxes by creating an LLC. That way you can. Live, get closer to living your financial dream. You're living financial free, you know? Yep. And I hope you do. Uh, and like you said, it, it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough, you know, coming home after, after eight, 10 hour work day, you're going to have to go just consider you working overtime. You're going to have to start grinding right, right there. Start at that 1%. Maybe it's read a book for five minutes about something you want to do towards your LLC. Maybe it's something you want to do to build your dream, you know, take right when you get off work, you just got to start on it. And it's just like we said earlier, if you just do little by little, 1% a day in a month, you'll be 30% better. We want to thank you guys for uh, listening today. And um, how about them chiefs? Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. It's Super Bowl. It's Super Bowl Sunday. It's Super Bowl week. Yeah, Super Bowl Sunday coming up. And those Chiefs are gonna get it. Good luck oh, to yeah. your Chiefs, Tech. Good luck to your Chiefs, brother. Good luck to you, whoever team you guys are rooting for. If your team is not in the Super Bowl, like Jake and mine, my team, go just for the enjoy Chiefs. the show. Go for the Chiefs. <laughs> Root for the Chiefs. <laughs> We're all rooting for the Chiefs this week. But yeah, congrats. Yep. Thank you guys for listening. Jake, you have anything else you want to say? 
Nope, that's it. I think tech closed it out uh, perfectly. You know, keep a, keep an open mind. You know, we did transition a little bit into motivation um, from the tax part, but be motivated to learn just to tie it in, right? Be motivated to learn um, a little bit about the, this tax stuff and, and and open up some doors. Think about some side hustles. You know, we, we, we're trying to improve and working on improving over here, and we want to encourage you guys to improve as well. Peace.